and welcome to EliteGuitarist.com. My name is Tavi Ginadio, and again I have the privilege to teach you another piece of music for the classical guitar. Today we're going to learn how to play Romance, also known by the name Je in Tech D. It is a very famous piece for the classical guitar and just because it is labeled as a beginner level piece does not mean that it's easy. So if you're a beginning student, do not feel like you are supposed to play this one perfectly uh, at your first attempt. It will require quite a bit of work and quite a bit of effort. However, with a little bit of perseverance, I think you'll make it through. So let's get straight to this piece. This is Romance. This piece is naturally divided in two halves. The first half is in the key of E minor. The second half is in the key of E major. If you're a beginner student, and you're wondering what is the difference between a minor and a major key, the simplest way I could put it is, remember that a minor key sounds sad. Here is an a, a E minor chord. It sounds kind of sad, think it's kind of gloomy, rainy, whatever uh, mental pictures you want associated with that kind of a sounding chord. And here is a major chord. So that's a happy sounding chord. So the first half of the piece is in the key of E minor and let's get straight to it. Before you actually start playing this, this piece and, and incorporating left hand notes with right hand articulation, uh, let's focus for a moment on the right hand. The right hand will play a repetitive finger picking pattern throughout the entire piece. And this is a, a version of an arpeggio. And the way we play this arpeggio is by plucking together the first and the sixth string. We're going to pluck E and E together. For the high E string, we're going to pluck that with the A finger. Let's practice that just a few times. Uh, on the chord note, three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and make sure that you're very relaxed as you pluck those notes you should not have a claw like position on your right hand and you should not pull the strings from underneath outward but we should press the bass string downward and we should pluck upward as you would play a harp with the A finger. Okay, after you become comfortable with that motion, we're going to follow up with two other notes played with the M and the I finger. The M will pluck the second open string B and the I finger will pluck the third string which is the G string. So let's try this. If you find yourself having a difficult time maintaining consistency with this finger picking pattern, try to start everything from a plant position until you become more secure. So plant, pluck together, the M finger and then the I finger. In order to become comfortable playing this arpeggio, you may find it easier to pluck the strings from the air, which means you pluck one string at a time, briefly plant the M finger before plucking the second string, and briefly plant with the I finger on the third string before plucking it. So. want to pause this video and actually practice just that finger picking pattern. If you really like to develop good instincts and a very disciplined technique, I would suggest you practice in a way that's a little bit more taxing. And uh, I would encourage you to basically plant all the fingers on each string and then discipline them to 
play the notes one at a time. So P and A together first, followed by M, and then I, then plant all fingers once again. P and A together, M and I. You'll find that your hands are going to fight you and the muscles are, are going to put some resistance to this but practice slowly and and gently kind of retrain your brain to send specific uh, information to, to your fingers before you start developing some comfort with this type of arpeggio for the purposes of playing this piece I simply pluck all the notes from the air and I think it has a more of a light touch, which is desirable for this kind of an introspective, more romantic sound. After you have become comfortable playing this arpeggio, you may want to start emphasizing the note played with the A finger. That finger is going to pluck the melody note all the other notes are going to be accompaniment. The notes played with the M and the I finger. But the notes played with the A finger are going to be the melody notes. And so you may want to really emphasize that A sound. Uh, you don't necessarily need to abuse that first high E string but simply plug the other strings a little bit softer to bring some attention to that first note in the arpeggio. Okay, so now let's put together the left and the right hand. And we're going to begin by placing the fourth finger on a B note. And this B note is found on the first string, the seventh fret we're going to place the fourth finger right next to the fret in order to ensure we get that crystal-like sound. And now we're going to play the open second string, B, and then the third open string, G. So, E and B together. There you go. So the low E note only gets attached to that high B note the first time through the arpeggio. And then the two subsequent times are going to be just the first three string without the bass note. So it should sound something like this. And that's your first bar. Let's continue. We're going to repeat exactly the same note, E and B together, followed by an A note and then a G note. So this bar should sound something like this. Alright, so let's slow this down just a little bit to figure out what kind of notes these are. So we're going to play again E and high B together, followed by the second and third string. And then we're going to play an A note with the second finger on the first string, fifth fret. So A, followed by second and third string, open string. And then we're going to play a G note, followed by the second and the third open string. The G note is played with the first finger on the first string, third fret. So. And now we're going to play exactly the same note, the G note, but I'm going to shift from the first finger to the second finger. And I'm going to attach that high G note to the low sixth string E. F sharp. So G, F sharp, played with the first finger on the first string, second fret, followed by the second and third string, 
and then open string E. So let's review up to this point in time, starting with a high B note on the seventh fret. Here we go. If you need to pause this video and just practice that first uh, couple of bars, uh, feel free to do so and then pick it right up, maybe later on today or tomorrow whenever you, your time allows you to do so. Let's continue. From this open string arpeggio, we're going to start playing the melody and this time the melody will ascend. We had a descending melody line and now we're going to ascend. And we're going to begin with an open E minor arpeggio and we're just going to plug open strings. So the first and the sixth string together followed by the second and third. And then I'm going to play a G note and then a B note. The G note is played with the first finger on the first string third fret followed again by the customary second and third string open string. So. This B note, you're familiar with it, is played with a fourth finger on the first string, seventh fret. And from here, I'm going to slide with the fourth finger all the way to the twelfth fret to play a high E note. So, and the high E note is played with a fourth finger on the first string, twelfth fret together with a low 6th string again and continuing and the notes here are E, D and C so let's take this entire ascending line Okay, now what we have here is a partial bar chord in the fifth position. For this partial bar chord, we're going to make sure that the thumb does not grab the guitar. We're not going to be able to play this kind of a partial bar chord, but the thumb should instead support the guitar from back here. So let's go to this fifth position chord. The first finger will lay uh, flat, pressing three out of the six strings, and the fourth finger will play a C note on the first string, eighth fret. And we're going to pluck the A bass note, which is the open fifth string. So A and C together, followed by the E, and C already pressed by the first finger. These are the second and the third strings. So then a B note and the B note is played with the third finger on the first string seventh fret and then an A note. The A note is pressed by this partial bar chord and so we're going to press three strings on the fifth fret and pluck them in the order one two and three with A, M, I. Then we're going to play A and A together, back to a B note with a third finger and then to a C note with a fourth finger. So the entire bar should sound something like this. Okay, 
if you find that uh, this bar chord, this partial bar chord is fairly taxing, um, feel free to, to give it a little bit of a rest. You don't want to be so intense and really put so much strain on this muscle on the palm of your hand. Uh, you should feel a little bit of discomfort and it should be a stretching experience but when it becomes painful pay attention to those pain signals that is your body telling you that uh, this is pushing it too hard and so stretch the muscle a little bit uh, embrace the resistance of that cord but don't really uh, abuse that muscle and and uh, and strain it and, and become overly tired and exhausted in pressing this chord. After playing this chord on the 5th fret, we're going to move to the 7th position. This is just a fancy term to say that the 1st finger will hover over the 7th fret. That's what it actually means. So... And this is a B major chord. And we're going to put the first finger over the seventh fret, pressing all six strings. You may want to experiment with the elevation of this first finger. Some players put the, the finger so low that the tip of the finger barely touches the sixth string. If that works for you and you're able to get a very crystal-like sound, a very clear sound, that's fine. But if you find yourself trying to elevate that finger a little bit and you get a, a clearer sound, then go for that one. So experiment with the height of that first finger. So full bar chord pressing all six strings and the second finger will press a D sharp note and this D sharp is played on the third string, the eighth fret. And we're going to pluck again the same B and B together, first and sixth string. If uh, this is the first time you're playing a bar chord, you're probably going to have a hard time making that second string ring out. It may sound something like this, a little bit buzzed and, uh, and a little bit noisy, but that's okay, you'll get stronger over the next couple of weeks. So, And then we're going to play a C natural note and then back to B. This C note is played with the third finger on the first string, eighth fret. So, and we're going to make it even more challenging now, playing a B and a D sharp together. And this is going to be quite a bit of a stretch. The D sharp is played with the fourth finger on the first string, eleventh fret. Back to C then back to B. The B note of course is already pressed on the first string 7th fret by this bar chord. So, okay and you could rest a little bit because I would imagine by now you feel a little bit of pain in that muscle. If that's the case just take a little bit of a break and just shake it off just a little bit, just gently and, and, and extend the fingers out, bring them back in and just relax it a little bit. Sometimes I just kind of let my, my, my whole uh, left arm hang down to and allow the gravity to kind of uh, relax those muscles a little bit. After this uh, chord, we're going to go to that beginning uh, melodic line. It's uh, the beginning descending line. So we're going to play a low sixth string E note and a B on the first string with a fourth finger on the seventh fret. Again followed by the open second and third string. A play with the second finger on the first string fifth fret. And now G, G played with the first finger on the first string, third fret. And now I'm going to switch and play the same G note with the second finger.
together with a bass note. So this is G, F sharp, and then open high E string. So. And now I'm going to play um, D7 over A. It's, a. it's an interesting chord. It's really kind of an A minor chord. That's the function of this chord. To play this chord, we're going to place the fourth finger on the first string on an F sharp note. This is on the second fret. We're going to play a C note with the first finger on the second string, first fret, and an A note with the third finger on the third string, second fret. And we're going to pluck the fifth string in the bass. So A and F sharp together followed by C and A. Let's it again. And from here I'm going to keep the third and the fourth finger as anchor fingers. And take the second finger and place it on a B note. This is on the fifth string, second fret. And I'm going to plug the same fifth string and first string. So B and F sharp followed by open second string B and then an A note played with a third finger on the third string so that last bar included that general chord it's a B7 chord and now I moved the fourth finger from an F sharp to a G. The G is played with a fourth finger on the first string, third fret. Back to F sharp. So let's take it in context from that A minor chord with an F sharp added. chord with the left hand where the third finger presses an E note on the fourth string second fret and the second finger will play a B note which is found on the fifth string second fret. We're going to pluck first of all that E note played on the fourth string. We're going to play that uh, simultaneously with the first string high E. Let's try that. Then we're going to play the fifth string, which is that B note, together with high E. And now I'm going to play a G natural note in the bass. And this G note is played with a fourth finger on the sixth string, third fret. And then a strum. That's an E minor chord. Let's review just that part and you're almost done with this first section. Just practice this section until it become relatively comfortable and then move to the next section which is the E major section. So after the rain and the clouds, here comes the sun. <laughs> 